going on everyone john matrix here hope you're getting yourselves a wonderful day uh we got some more 40k videos to check out here uh we just did a video from arbitrarian about uh the thousand suns we got another follow-up video of some more thousand suns lore before we get into the uh primark magnus video that we're gonna do eventually uh so we're checking out this video here by the scholars lore uh the rubric of araman i believe is how it's pronounced 40k lore uh so yeah i don't know really what this is about i, I assume it's some kind of character from the thousand sons um and some lore about him and them so i guess let's just jump in and check it out uh, as always links will be down below in the description to this original video without my commentary and reaction and to the scholars lore channel uh please do me the favor of going over there and giving this video uh the original video of the scholars lore like if you enjoy it and uh check out his channel he has a lot of great 40k content he makes a lot of great stuff so definitely deserve some love go over there and give him a sub if you enjoy his content um as you can see we're also doing this live for my youtube members so if you would like to join in the discussions that we have love to have you guys come in and hang out um there's a join button down below you can click that see if any of the youtube membership tiers and those benefits have any interest for you um but yeah otherwise we're just gonna jump on into this year video so let's do it greetings citizens of the imperium today we shall continue in our sermons regarding the dangers of the ruinous powers rather than cover a broad topic I will regale you with a specific tale of arrogant me. hubris, me of the hubris which led to a tragedy at a near unmatched scale for its time. I have previously alluded to the inherent risk of seeking out the powers of the dark gods, and this is because that at a fundamental level the demon is our enemy. They will scheme and plot to bring about our downfall. They will. And they will keep a smile on each of their foul, warp-tainted faces all the while. A demonic entity may promise you anything. It may boldly claim that you will become the mightiest warrior in the galaxy. It may offer you with a new life, free from the sorrows of disease and pain. It may tempt you with carnal pleasures beyond your wildest imagination. Or it may promise you with the forbidden secrets behind eternal life. And this is where our story is to be focused. The topic we shall be covering is the downfall of the Thousand Sons Astartes Legion, who were forced to meet their fates by the cataclysmic failings of their chief librarian, Azek Ariman. He had sought out warp-tainted knowledge to aid him in resolving an innate flaw with the Thousand Sons genome, and in mm. his quest, he developed a monumental ritual. So I'm assuming that flaw was probably the thing that uh, the, the flesh changing curse, you know, that they, they claim was a problem, which is essentially just, you know, them being turned into warp demons or whatever. I assume that's what they're talking about here. Which was named as the Rubric of Ahriman. So without further ado, let us learn of his folly. Yes. We shall first Let's learn the of adus. the Thousand Sons themselves, with a particular focus on their flawed genome. Then we shall investigate the workings of their Primarch, Magnus the Red, whose own mistakes drove Ahriman down the path of scribing his malign spell. Once the pieces are set, we will learn of the actual ritual and of its fateful outcome. Finally, we will cover the actions taken following this failure, including Ahriman's arduous contact with the Eldari. Mm. To begin, we must first recall the harrowed tale of the Emperor's My own demigod children, his Primarchs, and of their indomitable legions of once unwaveringly loyal Astartes. The Primarch project was an incomparably grand task where the Emperor sought out to produce 20 sons from his own genetic material and it was from these mighty individuals that he would be able to launch the Great Crusade to reclaim the galaxy as humanity's birthright. Now, as a somewhat salacious rumor, which inquisitorial agents would never confirm nor deny, it is said that the Emperor reached into the warp to wrangle free a nascent source of power which would be used to further embolden the already unmatched strengths of his sons. 
Yeah, supposedly, I mean, again, I don't know if this is true or not, but supposedly he may have even gone so far as to make a deal with either some other greater demons or the chaos gods themselves to essentially, I guess, take the essence of potentially greater demons and imbue the Primarch souls with them to enhance their power even more. And he made, again, like I said, potentially he made some kind of deal with them that he never intended to follow through on. And so that's also part of why the Primarchs were scattered uh, was some kind of like revenge for him reneging on the deal kind of a, kind of a situation, so. This, of course, is a highly heretical view which should not be spread beyond these halls. And the official stance is that the Emperor and his trusted advisors simply used the pinnacle of genetic engineering tools at their disposal to best tailor and alter the genomes of his sons to best suit their intended purpose. With this all being said, our gaze should turn to Magnus, who was destined to lead the Thousand Sons Legion as their Crimson King. For Magnus, the Emperor enhanced the already highly sensitive psychic genes into being exponentially more potent than any of his brothers, with the intention of him rising as one of the most powerful psychers in the galaxy, all for a goal which unfortunately met its end, but centuries after. The genetic modifications the Emperor made to Magnus were an unbridled success. He was a psyker of unmatched power who would only become more proficient and more capable in wrangling and controlling the immaterial forces as he matured and grew older. Even as the 20 young Primarchs were scattered across the galaxy by the infernal meddling of demonic entities, the Emperor was able to detect the psychic presence of Magnus as a brightly shining beacon throughout the galaxy. There is an old Terran saying about best laid plans falling to ruin. Yeah. And whatever plans the Emperor had for Magnus could certainly be covered by this phrase. Despite the unmatched enhancement of his psychic abilities, the massive genetic changes which were made to Magnus's genome resulted in a large degree of instability, which were only suppressed by his own near divine might. The yeah, I mean, like, you would think that as, you know, again, I've talked about this in some other videos, but you would think that with the Emperor knowing what the warp is and the demons are and him specifically engineering Magnus to be this great psyker, that he in particular would want to, once he refound Magnus, would want to work with him to get him to understand what the warp is, what the demons are, et cetera, et cetera. And to prepare him at an early age for what he wanted to create him for, which seems to be, uh, he intended to use him to sit on the golden throne and help him, uh, hold the denizens of chaos off while the emperor was, uh, you know, helping to while the emperor was essentially trying to connect the, the webway to Terra. You know, I, I think that's what the great plan was for him was to use Magnus as, you know, uh, a shield so that he could complete the webway project quicker or easier. So it feels like, again, a situation where you would think the emperor. And I mean, I know the emperor had, you know, who knows how many things he was working on and trying to do and all the various Things that happened during the, the Great Crusade that, you know, he may not have been able to prepare for, et cetera, et cetera. But I, 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 you would think that as soon as he went back to Terra to start the Webway project, he would have been like, Magnus, you're coming with me, dog. And have been like, hey, you know, this is what the plan is. You know, be prepared. I just feel like, I, I mean... Obviously, we don't have the same information that the Emperor did. The Emperor has the greater picture. There's, you know, we as the, the readers of the story still don't have the full picture of everything that's been going on. So, you know, there might have been more that he knew, but I still feel like that would be something that you would want to do, right? You know what I mean? But anyway, let's continue. Which were only suppressed by his own near divine might. 
The same, however, cannot be said for his legion. The thousand sons, whose own gene seed was derived from Magnus's, was utterly rife with problems, which manifested into a widespread mutation known as the flesh change. Well, that's interesting because I thought the gene seed itself was one of the more stable ones, but it was the psychic. They're, they're, they're using their psychic, psychic abilities and tapping into the warp that caused the flesh change. Now, I guess maybe this could be the official stance uh, of what they're saying is that, you know, that's what happened to the Thousand Sons is that their gene seed was unstable and led to the flesh change. And it wasn't because of, you know, the powers of the warp. That could be what the official statement is. And, you know, the scholars are repeating it here. It seems stable at first. OK. And then just at as time went by, it became unstable. The flaws came to be seen. That's what it was. Every member of the Thousand Sons were afflicted with this curse to some degree but none could be sure of when it would fully manifest itself within them. For most, the affliction would lie in a dormant state, where it would not result in any significant changes to the individual, allowing him to continue serving the Emperor as a noble Astartes. Nevertheless, as something as inevitable as the sun rising, at some point, their unstable genome would simply switch into a frenzied state. Mm. At this point, the fates of the afflicted marines would be sealed. They would devolve into a gibbering mass of flesh, a true horror of broken, multi-jointed limbs flailing about from their pulsating and malformed frames. New heads would burst forth from every corner of this malign creature, screeching in pain as their new-formed teeth simply fall from their loose jaws. Yummy. Now many of you will recognize these creatures as sounding remarkably similar to the foul creatures known as Chaos Spawn, and they are in fact born of the same machinations. The touch of the ruinous powers within the Thousand Suns' own DNA had damned them, without them even being aware of its presence. And upon witnessing the sheer scale of these horrific changes, the Legion sought out a solution. With the horrors of the flesh change in our minds, let us remember that since they were imbued with the genetic material of Magnus, who himself was an incredibly enhanced psyker, that the Thousand Suns Legion ended up containing a vast proportion of psychically sensitive individuals. Prior to the discovery of their Primarch, the psychers of the Thousand Suns had been desperately seeking out a cure to this affliction and one of the sorcerers who was most entrenched with this study was one known as Azek Ariman. He had killed his own twin brother after seeing Yikes. him fall to the change, and perhaps ah, in a bout of paranoia, he was fully expecting to succumb to that horrific fate himself. However, all this changed when the Legion was united with Magnus. The Cyclopean had been discovered by the Emperor upon the world of Prospero, and the two had spent several decades traveling the galaxy, where they discussed the secrets which lurk within the Immaterium, as well as of the malign entities who dwell within that ephemeral hellscape. An important point here is that there were some within the Imperium who saw the afflicted legion of the Thousand Suns as being too unstable and too dangerous to include within their plans, and they advocated for their utter destruction. Mm. But despite their cries, Magnus pleaded with and finally convinced the Emperor to allow him to take control of the Legion and to set out into the stars on the sole condition that he would find a cure for the flesh change before the Legion departed. Okay. After several decades of intense study... My man had a mission. My man was trying to go out there and... Solve the flesh change before, you know, it corrupted the Legion and the Legion would have to be put down, essentially, is where it was looking like it was going. Uh, he did uh, fall to the flesh change, uh, managed to turn to fix him, if I remember correctly. Gotcha. ...study and dubious activity, Magnus was prepared to present the miraculous results of his labors to his Legion and to the Imperium at large. It had seemed that the Crimson King had done what was once thought of as 
impossible, as he had finally resolved the tainted afflictions which had plagued his legion to the point of near ruin. No longer would an Astartes be damned into meeting their cursed fate as a... So, you know, I wonder at this point in time in history where Magnus is, you know, come in and said, hey, I'm going to find this, you know, cure, etc. Have the other legions already, like the, the two legions that have been expunged from history, has that already happened? Or is that something that's still going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, I, I wonder in the, the timeline of events where that takes place. Because it's like, what other members and other Primarchs, would they know that, you know, other legions have already been, you know, taken out, the Emperor's already had to do this for whatever reason? You know what I mean? Or would this have been, like, the first time it would have happened? You know, where the, the Magnus's Thousand Sons would have been, you know, wiped out, and uh, the Gene Seed would have been... I guess remade, right? The 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 emperor would have had to start from some, from scratch by remaking the gene seed from Magnus all over. It had already happened. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So I guess potentially there would also be the looming threat that maybe Magnus would already know that you know other legions had already been wiped out before, and he didn't want this to happen to his, you know, uh, his sons, etc. So I don't know. Looks on their sick. I'll get you a new set. Yeah, exactly. But Dad, I like my set. There's a writhing mass of mutated flesh, and the sorcerers could set out into the stars in the name of humanity. To this victory, however, there was an unseen cost. Unbeknownst to any, Magnus had done the unthinkable. He had communed with the demonic entities of the warp to seek out first their guidance and then finally to simply beseech them for a cure. Whilst projecting himself into the warp, Magnus had unknowingly come into contact with not just a demon, but a chaos god. He communed directly with Zinch, where the two debated and argued over the philosophical nature of life and of the inherent values it would provide for him to be bequeathed with a cure. See, to me, that's kind of interesting that he actually, like, just debated with Zinch. And I mean, like, who knows what other effects that would have had, you know what I mean? But it seems like he was able to just actually just sit there and, like, talk. See, and this is why I say I would easily be corrupted by Zinch. Because I would want to talk and learn from him, too. You know what I mean? Like, I could easily see myself being put in Magnus' situation where I'm just looking for, you know, a no I'm looking for a cure, I'm looking for knowledge or something like that. You know, I know there's denizens of the warp, I go on there and we just sit down and we have a conversation about this, that, and the other thing, and I don't know any better. You know, I'm ignorant to the fact of what I'm actually talking to and communicating with. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I can't defend this with Magnus? Right. So, I mean, it's like... I know, it's just interesting that he actually sat down and had an actual direct face-to-face -face conversation with Zinch. And I guess he came out of it without being necessarily corrupted in general, you know? Or driven mad in general. Magnus was again, he thought he could outsmart Zinch. He thought, okay, his creatures were just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he didn't know what exactly they were. Again, it's a situation where he wasn't fully aware of what they were, and... They thought there was something they weren't. They thought they were either, you know, another type of, of Xenos or, you know, some other kind of reflection of, of something in the Materium, but that they weren't actually, like, these, you know, super powerful beings that they were, you know? Eventually, Tinch found himself beaten, and so the two entered into a bargain. Sench would provide a cure to the flesh change if Magnus would give him his eye, to which he gleefully accepted before returning to his legion with tales of success. I mean, I guess in the long run you think about it, like an eye for a cure for all of your, your legionnaires, like that potentially isn't a bad trade, but at the same time I feel like that probably gave Zinch the ability to peer into whatever Magnus was doing whenever he wanted to, right? It, it probably was a situation where Zinch could then see through, you know, Magnus whenever he wanted 
and could influence him at any stage whenever he wanted to kind of a thing you know so i mean it's kind of like uh literally i guess it's like you know selling your soul kind of a situation um uh never called them gods he's holding all the trust things in the warp right well and i mean that kind of goes into magnus's arrogance of thinking that he was smart enough and strong enough to be able to outwit and outplay these things which I guess technically to his credit, he kind of did, right? Like Zinch admitted defeat, but really was it a defeat? And was this not part of Zinch's plan? Again, did Zinch not, you know, have this set up to begin with? And it wasn't actually a cure. Zinch just held back the flesh chain until the battle of Prospero, but it came back hard. Right, right. So, I mean, it's just a situation where like, <sighs> Zinch essentially, played him in 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 his hands like he he set him up for failure to begin with he allowed him to think he won and gave up a piece of him uh to make him believe that that was necessary to enact the cure when there was no actual cure now it should go without saying but magnus did not actually best zinch here Right. The entire situation was a long game being played by right. the changer of ways, all to pull Magnus into the sway of the dark gods. For you see, Zinch knew that if Magnus saw himself as having bested one of the powers which the Emperor forbade him from ever communing with, then he would be utterly emboldened with arrogance, and that this would push him to draw from the forces of the warp again and again, until he found himself utterly consumed by it. Furthermore, the cure which Tsench provided was only ever to be temporary, and the foul god knew that certain events would soon transpire to push the Legion closer to damnation. In any case... Yeah, I mean, when, when you're a chaos god, and in particular, you're Zinch, and you essentially kind of know and see everything, Patience is probably, like, your number one virtue, right? Like, being able to see everything and kind of plan around everything and all the potential futures and all that kind of stuff, like... Having patience and playing the long game is probably the thing that Zinch would be best at. You know what I mean? Which is why I feel like if any of the Chaos Gods were to actually probably win the great game, it probably would be Zinch. But uh, there are also situations where, like, choice matters, and there are certain things that I guess, you know, you can't actually really plan for. You know what I mean? So. He has Chaos God, he exists a ton of time, everything is happening at once, he just messes with shit to see how. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. I, like I said, I feel like if any of the Chaos Gods were to actually win the great game, I feel like it probably would be Zinch just because of his all-knowing ability and potential to manipulate things, to set things up uh, how he wants, essentially. Right, exactly. And, and, and that's, that's the thing, is like, that in and itself, I think, is his victory, right? Like, he knows that if he were to win, the game would end, and then he would have nothing else to do. Like, he would kind of just be bored, you know? So, like, his victory is essentially keeping the game going. Right, exactly. So that's, like, his victory in and of itself. That's why I say, like, if anyone were to win, it would be Zinch. Like, he could potentially win if he wanted to, but he just doesn't. This supposed cure was met with a sea of adoration and reverence from the Legion towards Magnus. He had done what was once considered impossible and saved them from a most terrible fate. The previously mentioned Azek Ahriman also idealized his actions to the point where he sought to follow in Magnus's steps to emulate him in his glory. He eventually rose to the rank of chief librarian, where he stood as the closest advisor to Magnus, and the two eventually formed a strong enough bond where Ahriman was entrusted with the Primarch's personal tome, the Book mm. of Magnus. The Book of Magnus, For years, eh? the Legion thought themselves to be safe. 
However, it was not until the Astartes deployed a task force to the world of Shrike that they saw their fate once again. A combined grouping of Astartes from the Thousand Suns, Word Bearers and Space Wolves had convened to enact the Emperor's will, but their planning was cut short by an odd sound. Mm. One of the Thousand Suns had suddenly fallen to the flesh change, something which right. none thought possible after the salvation of Magnus. Were yeah, wouldn't you if you're Magnus and, you, and this happens, wouldn't you be like, uh, what's happening here, boys? Uh, this is supposed to have been cured, you know? Zinch's Games Workshop uh, explains their substructure behavior while always wanting <laughs> the miniatures rolling. That makes sense. That would make sense. Yeah. But still, it had been seen by members of other legions, further damning the already suspicious name of the sorcerers. Magnus, however, simply presumed this to have been a fluke occurrence okay. caused by an okay. unrelated mutant. Now, now, now you're getting into territory where you're just like trying to avoid what's really happening in front of you, brother. Like, I'm sorry, but me being like, if you were to take my personality and knowledge, but put me in Magnus's place, I would look at that and say, hmm, hmm, I don't know. Did I really beat the chaos God or the chaos denizen? Was this a trick? I think this was a trick. I think this dude set me up. I think this dude set me up. You know what I mean? But then you would have to go to the Emperor and say, like, hey, man, this is what happened. And the Emperor would not be happy. Dad would, uh, you know, ground you and put you in your room and he would take away your TV and your PlayStation for a month. Kind of a situation. You know what I mean? And uh, he would wipe out your toys and throw them away. And uh, uh, you wouldn't be getting a new set of toys for a while. You know what I mean? Like, you know, your little your little G.I. Joes, they're going in the trash. They're getting sent to the Salvation Army or something like that. Mutation, which should not concern the rest of his legion, but this event had sowed the first seeds of doubt in Ahriman's mind. He had previously revered Magnus as their savior, but now he was plagued with the thought that perhaps they had been lied to, and perhaps the legion was still to be afflicted for all of time. And then this man was smarter than Magnus. In the following years, Magnus received prophesied visions of Horus betraying the emperor, and so. In an act of desperation, he sent a psychic projection of himself to terror, all to warn his liege of the impending treachery. During this process, however, Magnus devastated the delicate workings of the Human Webway Project, jeopardizing the Emperor's plans for humanity's golden future. In response, he banished Magnus from the palace and instructed Lehman Rust to take his legion of space wolves to Prospero, where they were to capture the Red Primarch and bring him back to be judged for his crimes. I shall only briefly cover the burning of Prospero, but suffice to say the Space Wolves enacted an overzealous and bloody war upon yeah. the Sorcerer's homeworld. Tens of thousands died as the two legions clashed, until the two Primarchs eventually engaged in a fated duel, which resulted in the mortal wounding of Magnus, potentially spelling his death. Fate, however, had other intentions for the Crimson King. Zinch whispered to Magnus that he could save both his own life, the lives of his entire legion, and preserve the combined knowledge of Prospero if he would simply offer his eternal fealty to the Dark God. Close to death, Magnus agreed, and in a single instant every surviving member of the Thousand Suns Legion vanished from the battlefield, having been psychically teleported onto a demon world within the warp. Whilst the Astartes found themselves intact, the same could not be said for Magnus. He had drank from the immaterial well, and its foul ichor had imbued every aspect of his Icor. mind, body and soul, leaving him as a demon prince of Zinch. Well. The Legion soon sought their revenge for the acts of perceived treachery at the hands of the Space Wolves and the Emperor, and so they joined with Horus's forces, pledging themselves to the destruction of the Imperium. 
I shall not cover this topic in detail today, but after the events of the heresy transpired, Magnus and his surviving legion were outcast to the Eye of Terror, where they would plot their ruinous return to the galaxy. Honestly, the fact that uh, Iron Man saw Magnus all basically be basically coming makes his own more tragic, uh, following the same sin as his father. Airman saw that things were messed up, uh, but his obsession with curing a flesh change damned him too. I mean, yeah, and you got to think about his position though too. Is it's like he probably knows that if they don't find a cure, that he and his brothers are going to be wiped out. You know what I mean? He might not know that it's happened to other legions in the past. But he probably knows that they'd be wiped out because I would assume Magnus would probably have told them if they didn't know from, uh, you know, the Emperor itself already because of the, the flaws supposedly in their gene seat. You know what I mean? So, like, it's literally kind of like a life or death situation. Not to mention, as the Scholar's Lord mentioned earlier in this video, you know, he saw his twin brother get turned and had to kill it. So, like... Seeing that and also having to kill your own brother and then coming to the realization of what you're going to turn into and or potentially are susceptible to being turned into and your other, you know, brother Astartes, like. You got to be desperate to try to prevent that from happening, you know what I mean? So, yeah, plus when they escaped to the planet of the sorcerers and the warp after Prospero, the flesh change got even worse. Right. I, I would. Yeah, you would assume so, right? So. Now, with the Legion finding its new home upon Sotiarius, the planet of the sorcerers, many saw Magnus as having led them towards damnation. Their home planet of Prospero was in ruins. Many of their kin were dead. They had betrayed their emperor. And worse still, the flesh change had returned. By the way, these fucking, like, flying demonic manta rays, I hate these fucking things in Bolt Gun. They are so goddamn annoying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, these things need to be made extinct. Anyway, let's we'll continue. The fickle and capricious energies of the warp had caused widespread mutations within the Thousand Suns. Le right, yeah, I mean, assume that uh, all the legions wonder about the two empty legion pedestals that don't know the full picture, right. They gotta know something has happened in some way. And so I'm sure probably somewhere in, in Armin's mind, he's like, oh well, shit, well maybe this is what happened to the other legions that got wiped out. Maybe they had the same problem. Or a similar problem. So it's like we need to find a cure while we have the chance so we get wiped out. Leading to a vastly accelerated progression of their genetic curse occurring throughout their ranks. Magnus, however, seemed rather distant from the mortal fates of his legion. He simply accepted the flesh change as an inevitability for them and departed mm. to study the infernal machinations of the warp. One who had seen the rise and fall of Magnus would be Ajek Ahriman. But any semblance of respect or love he held towards his Primarch was now replaced with utter hatred and bitterness at being misled by such a weak-willed, lying individual who could not even resist the sway of demons. As such, he retrieved the Book of Magnus, which contained within it the combined knowledge of the most advanced psychic teachings from Prospero and the wider galaxy, and he sought to find a cure for the flesh change himself. There is perhaps something quite ironic about Ahriman using a book which had been filled with warp-tainted secrets mm -hmm. to cure an affliction which found its roots within the warp. Yeah, you would think that, right? I mean, I, I guess there, there's... I guess there would be one way of thinking where it's like, okay, the affliction is coming from a warp. It's coming from the warp itself. So the cure is probably in the warp. But then the other line of thinking is like, well, the affliction's coming from the warp. So maybe denial of the warp and its use will solve the problem. You know what I mean? So it's like, are you going to double down and go even deeper? Knowing what happened to Magnus and the traitors, you know, among you and the Thousand Sons? Or are you going to deny that, like, psychic side of you and try to, like, shut that down and maybe purge some of that from the gene seed somehow as, as like, the answer? You know what I mean? Because it's, like, it's, it, it's obvious that 
the flesh change is part of their DNA because of the like psychically imbued power in them. Uh, it's probably like an offset issue with the fact of it being made from Magnus's DNA. And Magnus just happens to probably be on such a psychic powerful level. Plus he's imbued with whatever essence he imbued them with, you know, to make the Primarchs even stronger. So like, he's able to overcome that naturally but the regular stardies aren't able to do that they don't have the ability to do that you know so it seems like it's just like the answer is going to be on a genetic level with fixing the problem having to shut those like psychic dna you know parts of their dna you know off like shut those genes off essentially you know, but I feel like that would be the cure, like re re manipulating the gene seed to turn that shit off if it's even possible. You know, I, I feel like doubling down and going into the warp would be the big mistake. You know, thinking that. It just seems overly arrogant thinking that, OK, this is what Magnus did. This is what the Primarch did, who's vastly more powerful than me. And he fell to corruption and took a bunch of us with him. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll I'll be able to do it and find a, a cure and come out better. You know what I mean? Magnus trying to be ever changed. He's like the Emperor. He doesn't have warm form. So I always thought they had something to do with the flesh change. Those springs can't handle that kind of instability. Right. <clears throat> but I shall continue past his erroneous judgment. He toiled for days which bled into weeks, months, and then years until he had... Bro already just looks like a chaos, you know, marine with all these horns and shit on him. Finally distilled the combined teachings of this book into a colossal spell which could undo the terrors caused by the flesh change, providing his brothers with somewhat of a brighter future. He had named this spell as his rubric. In the ancient texts, this word translated into a notation of instruction. It was his command, his imperative, and his will made manifest unto reality itself. Interesting. With this ritual, he was prepared to elevate his dominance over this realm to a point where none but the gods themselves could question him. Hmm. In his first trials, he found great success, with it appearing to work as intended upon the remains of some of his brothers. Ahriman, however, knew... So the remains of some of his brothers? So he took people who were already dead and that had been turned by the flesh change and then mutated them back, essentially? So it's like they're already dead, right? So, like, I don't know. I guess that would be kind of, like, logical to do that as a first step before using a live person, you know? Because who knows, I guess, potentially what the side effects are. But at the same time, they're already dead. Right? So, I don't know. If you're taking the remains of someone and experimenting on them, that's completely different from a live person. Something that isn't mentioned here is during the heresy, Armin went on a quest to find the Shards of Magnus. During the quest, he needed a demon's help. In return, the demon looked into uh, the Book of Magnus and secretly changed a few lines of the spell, which uh, caused an ominous effect that implied why the rubric failed. Makes sense knew that he himself was not powerful enough to cast this spell with enough potency that it would cover his entire legion and produce a permanent solution. As such, he gathered a cabal of the most skilled and gifted sorcerers from his legion, who had each forsaken Magnus as but a fool who cared not for their lives. The sorcerers surrounded Ahriman, and he uttered the fated words to bring the rubric into unreality. In an instant, a gargantuan, occlusive cloud of crackling energies enveloped the entirety of the planet of the sorcerers. Nice. Multicolored hurricanes and tornadoes nice. carved their ephemeral path through the skies, raining drops of phosphorescent warp energy down to the planet's surface. That sounds bad. Such was the cataclysmic energy produced here, that demons themselves fled far from the world, not knowing what terrible occurrence was underway. Bro, when you make a spell that causes something to make demons run away in fear, you got some problems, man. You did something wrong. 
He did something wrong. As the rubric reached its climax, the storm clouds vomited forth gigantic Vomiting. bolts of arcane lightning, which arced through the air to singe even the energies of the warp, leaving ashy trails where they had traveled. Each and every thousand sun upon the planet was hit by one of these bolts, and for some, they absorbed the ephemeral warp energies, finding their psychic gifts having been vastly augmented and improved by the powers of the rubric. For all this success, only around 100 sorcerers were empowered by this spell. For others, right. however, they were not so lucky. The sheer power which had been unleashed from the rubric was simply too much for most Astartes to bear, and their bodies could not handle the torturous arcs of warp energy flowing through them. So only a hundred of them survived the augmentation and I guess were cured, but also enhanced, and everyone else got fucking zapped and fried, essentially. They just got turned to, to ash or probably mutated into demons. Their bodies of flesh were burnt to cinder, yeah. being reduced to naught but ash. Rip. But I mean, I guess technically he succeeded, you know, kind of in a roundabout way. He cured a hundred of them, but then killed everyone else. So, like... Survival of the fittest, I guess? Perhaps as a meddlesome action of Sinch, or perhaps as a mistake from Ahriman, the spell had also sealed their suits of power armor closed, resulting in the Yikes. souls of the Astartes being forever trapped within them. Yikes. The terrible destruction of this spell sent waves of overpowering True. energy out through the warp, utterly battering Ariman and his cabal to the point where it seemed that they were losing control over its powers. The free-flowing rubric was eventually wrangled into submission by Magnus, who had returned to intervene after feeling within his own soul the torturous pains which his legion had endured from the psychic storm. All that remained of the Thousand Sons was but 100 sorcerers Damn. and a legion of dead Astartes lying face down upon the singed earth. With such a grisly sight, it would have appeared that the rubric was an abject failure. But it was then that in a twist of fate, the apparent failings of Ahriman's ritual revealed themselves to be a total success. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, a hundred of them survived and not only was the flesh change, I guess, removed, but now you enhanced them and made them even stronger. So like, you know, sort of a win, you know, maybe. The power armor suits stood themselves upright and marched into formation, standing yet still as members of the legionnaires Astartes. Though their bodies had turned to ash, their souls persisted within their armor, and though they were no longer sentient, they were free from the malign fate of the flesh curse. Almost kind of uh, Necronish, right? But instead of like, like their souls being destroyed and devoured by a god, their souls are just now bound to their power armor and they have no physical body anymore other than the power suit itself. Like their power suits have become their physical body. But do they kind of like still feel they have emotion? Do they have, you know, any sense of self? Because the Necrons don't, other than some of the more like, you know, powerful higher ups in the Necron, you know, dynasties or whatever. Uh, so the thing with the Rurik uh, Marines is that there are basically like Necron warriors. They're minus suits of armor unless they're being commanded by a sorcerer. The sorcerers are uh, described like beacons in the darkness that bring the Rubik Marines out of the slumber. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking, right? Yeah, that sounds very Necronish. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't be the only thing that uh, they share with them. Only when the Rubik Marines have any sense of consciousness. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, it is kind of like a very Necronish. Uh, fate for uh, those members of the Thousand Sons Legion. 
These Astartes now stood as rubric marines who would follow only the directive of a thousand sun sorcerer as a legion of dreadful automata. The sorcerers who had involved themselves with this coven were disgusted and horrified I'm by bad. what had transpired, but their actions were irreversible and they could not turn back time to rectify their failings. It's like, God damn it, why'd I do this? But at the same time, it's like, well, I can't undo it. So now I've got a legion of, you know, servants that'll do my bidding that are even more powerful than they were before. So again, win? Question mark? Their once proud brothers had been reduced to ash with but barren husks replacing right. their vibrant and unique souls. For Ahriman, he was somewhat conflicted with the outcome. Whilst, yes, it was undeniably not the most fortuitous outcome for the rubric, but at the same time, he saw it as something of a necessary evil, since his brothers were now safe from the curse of their mutations. I mean, are they? Because, like, they're dead. They essentially are mindless spirits locked into their power armor, brother. Like... They don't really even exist anymore. So, I mean, I guess technically a cure. Like, I mean, you can't mutate if you're dead, right? Again, W question mark. And the result was but a small price to pay when compared to the alternative. Magnus, however, was mortified by this action. He stormed into the fortress of Ahriman and psychically forced him to his knees to answer for what he had done. Despite the overwhelming powers crashing into Ahriman, he managed to say but one twisted phrase, I succeeded where you failed. In response, the demon Primarch, enraged by such insolence spoken to him by he who had damned his legion, raised his immense fist to strike Ahriman down until he heard a soft whisper in his ear. He heard the voice of Zinch, who laughed and asked him, Magnus, would you smash my pawn so readily? Thus, it was here that both Magnus and Ahriman discovered the sheer levels of trickery yep. which had been at play. Y'all got both played, Primark brother. and Astartes had been used and pushed closer to damnation. You played yourselves. And their actions had solely been orchestrated to draw them deeper and deeper towards the sway of the ruinous powers. Even though they had both swelled into psychers of unmatched power, we still have to wonder, was this truly worth it? Magnus was left utterly infuriated by this turn of events. He despised Zinch for manipulating him and was truly disgusted by Ahriman for having decimated his legion in the manner of the rubric. As such, he banished the chief librarian along with his conclave, hoping to distance himself from whatever plans and schemes Zench had crafted for him. Yeah, Ahriman has himself embarked upon a new quest, however. His opinion... Because it's like, when you're dealing with Zench, it's one of those situations where, like, Zench came out and basically admitted that you guys played yourselves. So... It's like, okay, you're going to banish him, but does that not play into Zinch's hands even more? You know what I mean? Like, are you setting up a situation where either you or uh, Armin are going to be put in a situation where they're going to need Zinch even more and ask for more help? You know what I mean? And then they're going to, their corruption's going to dive even deeper. You know, it's like, it's one of those situations where it's like, what is the right play if I want to, like, get myself free or get back at Zinch? And is there even a right play that's not going to just make me, you know, fall deeper into his clutches? ...of the rubric has slowly changed over time. Right. And though he once considered it as a success, he now sees it as an abject failure. He had robbed his brothers of their sacred gift of life simply to prevent a potential outcome from occurring and so he has committed himself to resolve his past failings. As such, Ahriman has now set out with a warband to discover the innate secrets of the warp, all in order to find a true cure for not only the failings of the rubric, but also of the flesh change. 
The rubric marine still march to war beneath him, following in his every order, but they do so not out of loyalty, but instead as mindless husks who know nothing beyond their own torment. Mm -hmm. In the following millennia, Ahriman scoured the entire galaxy for any forbidden secrets of the warp that he could find, and in time he found himself at the precipice of his atonement. The culmination of his arduous studies was a new spell, his second rubric. Oh, Lord. One which could reverse... I'm sure this is going to work out just fine compared to the first time. ...his failings and bring back life to his ashen brothers. Perhaps the most stark difference between the two rituals was that for this instance, his own sacrifice was required as something of a necessity mm. for its full completion. Perhaps this was intended as some form of penitent justice to redeem his soul, but it matters not, for Ahriman was not able to complete his ritual undisturbed. Upon the glittering, warp-stained grounds of the planet of the sorcerers, Ahriman had initiated his rubric, and in a flash of silver, he found himself drowning in the wave of existence which crashed over him. However, it was here, when he was most vulnerable, that he found failure. The scheming members of the Thousand Sons were rarely united in their purpose, but the sorcerer Astreos intended to disrupt the rubric for a rather spiteful reason. He had been possessed by what was originally thought of as a demon, but in actuality he was the host to one of the fabled shards of Magnus's soul, mm. which had been shattered during the Horus heresy. Interesting. So that's kind of strange then, right? So it's like... How is, Ma mm -mm. How is Magnus able to, like, still kind of... I, I guess it's the warp, right? So who knows what kind of fuckery happens in the warp? But it's like, how is Magnus able to essentially kind of coalesce his being with all these shards separated? And some of them essentially being possessed by people or other beings, right? You know what I mean? So it's like, how would Magnus have been able to, like, step in and do anything with this. The Magnus that leads Thousand Sons is most of the shards. Gotcha, okay. So essentially, it's just a collection of what the majority of the shards are, but there's still other pieces of him that are have been separated. Uh, there are a few they could never get back. Gotcha. Well, then I mean, I, then I guess the question would be too, is like, what would happen to Magnus if he ever got all the shards back? Would he truly regret his actions? Would he try to repent and become normal again? Um, one can fuse a thousand of the lowest to became the first gray knight. Gotcha. Cause that would be an interesting story to see. That'd be an interesting story to see what would happen to Magnus if he were to ever get all of his shards back. Would he, you know, try to break free of the chaos, uh, you know, stain that he put upon himself? Would he try to repent and become good again? You know, become a loyalist, try to atone for his sins kind of a situation, et cetera, et cetera. The meddlesome interference of Astraos was thus twofold. Firstly, it was done as a form of revenge against Ahriman for his failings to the Thousand Sons, and secondly, it was an attempt by Magnus to reclaim the shard within Astraos, all to restore some semblance of his psychic might. As such, during the chaotic apex of the second rubric, the spell was interrupted and brought to a crashing, tumultuous halt. Ahriman was unable to complete his ritual, but he survived the ordeal. Astraos had his shard ripped from his broken body by Magnus, who simply looked down upon the sorcerer with pity before departing deeper into the warp. As the cabal of sorcerers recovered from this calamity, there was one rubric marine who stood out from the rest, one who none could look away from. Amidst the endless legion of soulless automata, one man stood, barefaced and undeniably alive. Mm. Ahriman was forced to conceal his own shock at such an impossibility, but he approached the trembling man and reassured him that the two were brothers and that there was nothing to fear in this abyssal realm. The marine who had been brought back to life was known as Helio Isidorus, and his new life 
prove to Ahriman that his mistakes could be reversed and that the entire Thousand Suns Legion could be restored to their former glory. So there is potential to bring them all back. There is potential. See, I mean, again, is this playing more into Zinch's hands? Is this going to drive him more to madness trying to find the cure if there is actually a potential cure or if Zinch didn't just allow this to happen? You know what I mean? Ah. It's literally like a chess game where you got to think, you know, a thousand, ten thousand steps ahead. Honestly, in my opinion, uh, a few of the Loyalist Legions would have uh, refused said option too if they had been there. I can definitely see Sanguinius having a really hard time choosing. Oh, for sure. For sure. I, yeah, I don't, I don't see just about any of the Primarchs choosing to give up their Legion in order to correct something that they did. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that this isn't the case. Even Vulcan, who was there, thought to himself, I could never have made that choice. I mean, true, dude. I, I really don't see any of the Primarchs. Other than maybe Fulgrim? I could potentially see Fulgrim in some way because of the idea of, like, he's looking for perfection to be as close to the Emperor as possible. So if he could be convinced that his legions are flawed in some way and they could be made even more perfect that might be a, a case he might be the only one i could see doing that but i don't see lionel johnson doing that i don't see jagatai doing that i don't i really don't see any of the other primarchs doing that you know what i mean i don't know i don't see yeah alfarius i could see alfarius doing that too uh, especially because he's already kind of potentially working against them you know what i mean Calculated decision. Yeah, with how Alpharis's mind works. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I don't know. I don't see Lion doing it. I don't really see Dorn doing it. Maybe Angron. Because Angron seems like he doesn't give a shit about anything but himself, right? I could see Angron doing it. Rather be Heresy Lion, present Lion, maybe not. Yeah, I guess so. I guess potentially, yeah. I, I guess pre Heresy Lion for the greater good might do it. If he can be convinced that it is for the greater good, you know? So. But I mean, it would be a rough choice, man. It'd be a rough choice. I, and I do definitely think that the majority of the Primarchs would have agreed with Magnus and they wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, however, whilst Isidorus may have emerged with his body intact, the same could not be said for his mind. He had no memories beyond his own name. I guess uh, an easy one would be, um, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. The Night Haunter, that Primarch. I can't think of his name right now. The, the Night Lord's Primarch. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. He would easily choose that. He'd be like, sacrifice them now. Fuck those guys. They're worthless. They're fucking worthless, dude. Like, if, I, if you have to take all of them to fix me, do it. Whatever, whatever, that's not even a choice. Yeah, Conrad, yeah. Conrad would be like, why is this even, why are you even asking me? Why haven't you done this already? Like, are you kidding me? Are you telling me you can fix me by like taking all these guys and killing them? And it, like, why didn't you do this? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like Conrad would do that in a heartbeat. You'd be the only one that I could really see like, duh, of course, of course you can sacrifice them. Why are you asking me this? Are you stupid? And only to mind. He had no memories beyond his own name. And only time will tell if his spirit stands resolute, or if it has been somehow twisted and contorted by the machinations of the rubric. In the wake of Abaddon, the despoiler's successes during the 13th Black Crusade, Ariman had heard sorted whispers from demonic spies of an Eldari resurrection ceremony mm. occurring deep within the webway. This was a plot from the newly formed... Oh, this, this was when they were trying to... I forget what god it is, but they were trying to resurrect their god. Or a god. In order to prevent their souls from being taken from Rumpselnesh. This is, that's an interesting little timeline connection there. 
formed Inari deep within the webway. Yeah, yeah. This was a plot from the newly formed Inari faction. Yeah, their god of death, who sought to right. find a method for reawakening Iniad, the Eldari god of the dead, who would have the power to defeat Slanesh and restore the Eldari Empire to its ancient days of glory. Now, any rumors of a ceremony which could resurrect a god would surely hold some secrets which could aid Ahriman in finally restoring life to his legion, and so he orchestrated a contingent of sorcerers, rubric marines, and demons to infiltrate this monumental event. I feel like it's a situation where you should go to the Eldar and be like, hey man, like, Maybe maybe it's a situation where you want to try diplomacy over just like Give me the, the, the recipe, how do you fix this? You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's a situation where you'd be like, hey man, we could work together. We could we could, you know, I, I could, you know, help you out with the psychic shit here, man. We could we could we could work together, figure this out, hook me up with a little, you know, uh, you know, let me know what, what herbs and spices you gotta throw into this spell. So I can, uh, you know, get my boys back to life here. We can fix this, you know, let's, let's, you know, work together, throw away some, some bad blood, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted to build my era. It seems like they already put their plug since they're heresy Marines. After completing a mass sacrifice of 999 captives to Zinch, the Cabal were transported into the webway where they faced off against the combined forces of the Eldari. So man sacrificing even more shit to Zinch in order to get this done. Like, okay. Cult. As the two groups battled, the presiding champion of Inead's triumvirate, Ivrain, beseeched Ahriman to pull back and spare her life. As a bargaining chip, she demonstrated her powers over life and death by fully restoring the perfected, intact souls of a dozen rubric marines. See? See? The Thousand Work Sons together, were pristine. Man. And unlike Ahriman's previous efforts with his second rubric, these Astartes emerged with their memories perfectly preserved. The confused group knew not of where they were, but they still recognized Ahriman as their commanding brother-in-arms, and so rushed to his defense. Ahriman, utterly shocked by the sheer majesty of this event, invoked a spell to save the remaining Eldari forces from his own army, before turning back to Ivrain, intent on gleaning the secrets of life which she clearly controlled. Unfortunately, however, this was but another Eldari ploy, which was always intended to pull on the heartstrings of Ahriman. Rep. As soon as the triumvirate of Inead were safe, a mighty wraith knight cleaved open a gaping rift within the webway with naught but death to be found within its vast chasm. Rep. The living avatar of Inead, the Incarni, stepped towards the fissure's edge and opened its gargantuan maw with a rushing inhalation. The newly restored thousand suns were tragically swept up and pulled into the void with their ancient souls being utterly destroyed in the process. With a terrible scream, Ahriman saw his true brothers meet their final death. Their souls could not be recovered from such an event, and no rubrics or incantations would ever be able to restore those who had been lost that day. As Ivrain departed with her forces, she taunted Ahriman by claiming that the Whispering God gives new life just as he takes it away. This shall Yikes. bring an end to our sermon. Having witnessed both his own successes in restoring life, as well as from seeing the revival of his brothers by the Eldari, Ahriman was imbued with a new sense of purpose, where he understood that there was a true possibility in resolving his fatal mistakes with the original rubric. Legends say that he is currently seeking out the secrets of the Black Library, which he hopes to read. Legends say he's still searching for it to this very day. Reach through the dark city of Komorah. But only time will tell if he is victorious in this near impossible endeavor. 
Truly we must recognize that Magnus and Ahriman both saw the powers of chaos as something to be exploited and utilized for their own gain, but it was from their folly that they met damnation. Yeah. Nothing to- Yeah, I mean, the fact that you think that you can actually take those powers and use them for your own gain without consequences, you know, that's kind of like the height of hubris. Taken from the warp is free. There is no gift given by a demon and no lesson to be learnt without a cruel teaching behind it. Blessed citizens, be ever vigilant and cautious when dealing with the ruinous powers, for if you tamper with that which you do not know, then you will surely meet your untimely and terrible end. All right, well, there we go. There we go. Yeah, it's interesting that both Iron Man and Fabius Bile have both been in uh, Lamar recently. I wonder if they cross paths. I mean, probably. Probably. Uh, but that was uh, the Rubik of Iron Man 40k lore video by the Scholar's Lore. Uh, links will be down below in the description. The original channel, or to the original channel and to the original video of his that my commentary and reaction. Uh, so please do me a favor click on those links if you like this video of his that he made Please go over there and give that video a like uh, and check out the rest of his channel He does a lot of great 40k content uh, And he definitely deserves some support. So go over there give give his channel a sub and uh, I'm pretty sure he's got a patreon and some other things. So if you want to take that support to the next level, you know check out his stuff um, but I mean this just kind of goes into like really the hubris again of thinking that you can take things from the warp play with the chaos gods etc etc or demons in general and think that you'll get away with whatever you're seeking without some kind of consequences and it really just goes to show that like when you get in league with zinch in general like anything you're doing just plays into his hands further like it really just seems like, you know, once he revealed to them that, yeah, you guys, I was always playing you from the beginning. Then, you know, Magnus banished him. That's just playing into what Zinch wants even more. And then him, you know, seeking the second type of rubric spell that bound them into, you know, their, their souls into suits and essentially made them kind of, you know, space marine necrons like that's a pretty shitty fate but then him doing a third version of the spell that brought one person back to life it's like okay after everything you know and everything you've done and everything that's happened is this really what you're looking for or is this what zinch is allowing to happen so that he's you're playing into his hands even more you know what i mean are you going to continue to try to look even deeper into the warp for you know ways to quote unquote perfect the spell even more that's only going to lead to even more severe consequences that are just going to play into zinch's hands even more you know what i mean i feel like you know going with the eldari would have been the way out of it and obviously instead of just like jumping in in force trying to be like you know setting up diplomatic ties of some kind of way be like hey man you know I got the situation going on. Uh, you know, you got this ritual happening. Maybe we can help each other out. You know what I mean? Maybe I can go over there and lend you some of my power in this ritual so you can bring this dude back. Maybe you can then, you know, give me the recipe. Let me know what kind of, you know, 12, 12 urban spices you're throwing in your fried chicken here, you know, so I can bring my boys back. Kind of a situation, you know? I think it's a situ it, it, it. I feel like it's just a situation where Diplomacy would, would have been better than trying to brute force because I mean like what are you really gonna get out of it by jumping in and disturbing this ritual that the Eldar have you know who knows how long they've been working for and it's a situation where I've said situation way too many times in the last few sentences but it, it, it they're you know trying to bring back a god of death that can take on Slanesh potentially kill Slanesh and allow their souls to actually have an afterlife instead of being devoured by Slanesh or being put into some kind of box. You know what I mean? So it's like, they have just as much, if not more at stake than you do, 
trying to crash the ritual. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, if you pass me some of your sorcery stuff, yeah, exactly. I, exactly. You know what I mean? I'll give you some of my, you know, let's, 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 let's do some trading cards here. Let's do some trading cards here. You know what I'm saying? We can, we can pass some secrets along with each other. So, I don't know. But... Who knows if he's ever going to find uh, a cure? Probably not. Like I said, I feel like it's just a situation where he's going to keep, you know, diving further and further into the madness that is Zinch and only getting, you know, locked into what Zinch wants from him even more. You know, so. But um, definitely some more interesting backstory in the Thousand Suns and stuff that happened between Magnus and Armin and where they're currently at and these Rubik Marines. Uh, you know, again, very interesting, uh, pretty much kind of like a Necron tie-in, honestly. I mean, it has nothing to do with the Necrons, but they are essentially, you know, basically space marine Necrons that, uh, have no sentience, their souls are bound to their power armor, and they essentially are asleep until one of the sorcerers wakes them up and gives them commands to do something. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, um, and again, like I said earlier, it would be interesting to see some kind of story based on what were to happen should Magnus get all of his pieces of his soul back, you know, would he again, try to double down even further and continue more with the chaos corruption? Would he feel regret for his actions and what happened and understand certain things better? Especially now that he knows that he's been played by Zinch the whole time and would he try to repent and return to try to help, you know, his brothers that are re-emerging and other loyalists to try to, you know, uh, help the Imperium and repent for his sins kind of a situation and would they even let him, you know what I mean? Like, Knowing what Gilliman and the Lion know about him and what happened, well, I would assume they would know about him and what happened, you know, and what he's done. Like, would they even allow him to try to correct his sins or would they think it's a play? You know what I mean? Would they think it's some kind of uh, trap or setup uh, that Magnus is trying to play the long run to get something, maybe closer to the Emperor's body to use it for some reason? You know, who knows? Who knows? But. Anyway, like I said, another great video from the Scholar's Lore. Links down below in the description to all of his stuff. Please go over there and check his stuff out. Give him likes, give him subs, all that stuff. Uh, we're doing this uh, reaction live, as you can see, for my YouTube members. So uh, if you would like to come in and join the discussions that we have as we're doing these reactions, would love to have you guys come in here. There's a join button down below this video. Uh, and there's also a link in the description to the member benefits that I offer. If any of the tiers have any interest for you, if you would like to, and come join and hang out. Regardless of any of that, I just appreciate you guys coming in, checking out the video, taking the time out of your day to do so. Greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and a sub as it helps me and it helps the channel grow. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Hope you're having yourselves a wonderful day. We'll see you on the next one, guys.